Chapter 14, Give the People What They Want. Judson Moon for President, read the huge banner strung across the stage. It looked like every American flag in the school had been moved into the auditorium. I peeked from behind the curtain and saw my classmates sitting out there, buzzing with excitement. The school band was playing Hail to the Chief. The podium looked like a lonely place to be. Lane straightened my tie for me and handed me some sheets of paper. What does it say? I asked. It's a pretty standard political speech, he replied. You know, the flag, patriotism, stuff like that. I'm scared, Lane. What am I doing here? Starting the adventure of a lifetime, he said with a smile. You'll be great. Can you feel the energy out there? Feed off it. Throw their energy right back at them. I didn't have any time to read Lane's speech. Principal Berlin got up on stage. He held his hand up and made the V sign with his fingers, which in our school means everybody has to stop talking right away. Students, the principal said when everybody calmed down. I have been at O'Keefe School for 18 years. In that time, I have met many remarkable young men and women, but never in my years have I run across a student with the ambition of this young man. I asked him here today to give us his first public speech and kick off his campaign. I hope he will be an example to you all. Let's give a big hand for the next president of the United States, our own Judson Moon. Lane gave me a little shove and I walked to the podium. The applause was deafening. I've heard applause before, of course, but never for me. When the applause is for you, it somehow sounds different. You hear the hands clapping with your ears, but it just washes over you. You can't tell how loud it is or how long it goes on. You go into a sort of trance state. Finally, the kids hushed themselves. The whole school was staring at me. I fumbled for papers Lane had given me. It took all my concentration to read the words. It didn't matter what they said. I just didn't want to make any dumb mistakes. Fellow students, I began, we are making history today. Never in the history of the United States of America has a child, one of us, run for the office of president. That's what I am doing, and I come here today to ask for your support. Some kids started cheering and hooting, a chant of moon, 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 swept across the auditorium. The teachers did their best to hush the kids. I waited until everybody calmed down before continuing. I'm sure you're aware of the problems our country faces today. Crime, climate change, unemployment, racism, substance abuse, too much homework. That got a laugh. Let me ask you this, I continued. Who is responsible for these problems? Is it Congress? Foreigners? Rich people? Poor people? Black people? White people? Women? Men? No, there is one group is totally to blame for all the problems in our country today, and I'll tell you who that group is. I paused for a moment to find my place on the page. Grown-ups, I shouted. The kids went nuts. A cheer went up. Kids were stomping their feet. The teachers began to look around at each other nervously. That's who's responsible for the problems of our country. Tell me, who's responsible for housing discrimination, sex discrimination, and race discrimination? Grown-ups, they screamed. Who burned all the fossil fuels, cut down the rainforests, made our water unsafe to drink, and our air unsafe to breathe? Grown-ups, they screamed even louder. Who brought on the health care crisis? Grown-ups! Who caused every war in the history of this planet? Grown-ups! That's right. Kids had nothing to do with any of these problems. Tell me this. 
are grown-ups going to solve all these problems they created? No, the whole school shouted. That's right, I said more confidently. In this young millennium, it's going to be up to us to solve the problems created in the last millennium. And the way I look at it, the first step is for a kid to run for president and win. They were in the palm of my hand now. I could feel it. Every student was silent and staring at me, even the eighth grade jerks who never shut up for anything. I felt like I could tell them that the earth was really flat and they'd agree with me. I spotted Chelsea in the front row now. She was looking at me in awe. Now, we all know that none of us can vote yet, I continued. The grown-ups made sure of that, didn't they? What I want each of you to do is convince your parents to vote for me. You may have to beg them. You may have to put a little pressure on them. But if you want to solve these problems I've been talking about, do whatever you can to get your moms and dads to vote for me. Because if they vote for another grown-up, we'll only have the same old problems grown-ups have caused over the last two centuries. Moon, 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 they chanted. It took a while before I could continue. My fellow students, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what's in it for me? Well, I'll tell you what's in it for you. In appreciation for your support, my first official act as President of the United States will be to abolish homework now and forever. A huge roar of approval went up across the auditorium, clapping, screaming, foot stomping. The whole room was shaking. It felt like a football game. The teachers were flipping out. I felt an exhilarating surge of power I had never experienced before. They were cheering because of me. They were whipped up because of what I was saying. It was a rush. If your parents vote for me, I bellowed in the microphone, homework will go the way of the horse and buggy. Fists were pumping in the air. Homework will become a quaint reminder of what life was like back in our parents' childhoods. Kids were jumping up and down on their seats. In our childhood, the only place you'll see homework will be in museums. It was a pandemonium. I paused to allow them to calm down a little. I didn't want to incite a riot or anything. I noticed a boy standing in the middle of the auditorium, raising his hand and shouting insistently, excuse me. Peering at him, I could see it was that jerk, Arthur Krantz. Yes, Mr. Krantz, I called out. You have a comment? First of all, the President of the United States has no power to abolish homework. None. Zero. Second, we need homework. Doing homework is how students reinforce what we learn at school. Homework is a good thing. I glanced over to Lane at the side of the stage for some advice. He was mouthing some words to me, but I couldn't make them out. I was never any good at reading lips, but Watching him gave me an idea. Read my lips, booger boy, I bellowed. No more homework. No more homework. No more homework. No more homework, chanted the school at one. The kids around Krantz told him to shut up and sit down. You're just making empty promises to get votes, Krantz shouted at me. Your candidacy is a joke. Your running mate is a grown-up, you hypocrite. You don't know anything about anything. You're going to make all kids look bad. A group of boys jumped on Krantz and started punching him. Some teachers rushed over to pull the boys off him. Krantz was taken out of the auditorium, holding his hand over his eye. I glanced at my speech and saw I was almost at the bottom. Fellow students, our grandparents had their chance to save America. They blew it. Our parents had their chance to save America. They blew it. 
Now it's a new millennium and our generation is going to get our chance. Let's not blow it. The time has come to pass the torch to a new generation. Ask not what your parents can do for you. Ask what you can do for yourselves. Kids are the only hope for America. Thank you. No more homework, the kids chanted as I left the podium. No more homework. As I came off the stage, Principal Berlin looked at me like I was an insect. The teachers looked like they were in shock. The kids, of course, looked thrilled. The dumbest guys seemed particularly happy, fist bumping me and saying stuff like, awesome dude. Looks as if you've got the kids vote, Lane said, giving me a hug. Don't you think that went a little too far, Lane? I asked. Krantz was right, you know. I can't promise to get rid of homework. That's crazy. It's the first rule of politics, Judd. Give the people what they want. Lane led me over to a guy waiting backstage. Judson, he said, I want to introduce you to Ben Davis. He's with the AP. Pleased to meet you, I said as I shook his hand. My mom does her grocery shopping at your store. Not the A&P, Judd, Lane said, chuckling. The AP, Associated Press. Which paper is that? I asked. All of them, Davis replied. When I write a story, the a puts, AP puts it in hundreds of newspapers, sometimes thousands, and we blast it out to every news website on the net. Wow, I marveled. And they haven't been caught? He thought that was funny. Not every newspaper and website creates their own content, Davis said. They pay a guy like me to write something once, and then they run it everywhere. That's called syndication. Are you going to write an article about me that will run everywhere? I asked. You got it, kid. You're going to be all over the news tomorrow morning. I gulped. Lane was beaming from ear to ear. He was taking this run for president seriously. He must have taken the clipping that appeared in the Capital Times and sent Ride. it to the Oops, sorry. Sent it to the Associated Press. One day, I was fairly anonymous kid who liked to ride his bike and go fishing. The next day, virtually every man, woman, and child in America would know my name.